the uh, bigger story that has been going around, and this is not a story that has been going around for a few days. This is a story that has been going around for actually many months. And I have not commented on it previously because it was, and it still is, just a rumor. There is really nothing to base this on in fact. But as it is being talked about more and more, and you point to some of the, the little signs that are out there, I do believe that there is smoke to the fire. But we still have to just understand that this is all, at this point, just a rumor. But what kicked all of this off this week, I guess on a recent Jim Cornette Experience podcast, uh, his co-host Brian Last had made comments to the effect of hearing stories from uh, unnamed sources, I guess, about angry messages and emails that have gone back and forth between some of the EVPs in AEW, that being Cody and Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Again, not the first time I've heard this, but when you hear, oh, it's the Jim Cornette's podcast, and even though that wasn't coming from Cornette himself, who is an admitted, I mean, he does not like any of those people. We know that, right? We know he does not like the Bucks. We know he does not like Kenny Omega. He used to like Cody. I don't know if he likes him anymore. But it came from his his co-host. And I don't know what, what his stance is one way or the other on AEW. But I guess on uh, one of the Fightful podcasts, Sean Ross Sapp, chimed in, said that he heard the same rumors, and, uh, you yeah, know, it was worth asking about. The people who were talking about this, you know, according to him, are not the people from within AEW. There are other people who uh, have been talking about this. And then, over on the Torch website, Wade Keller and Jason Powell, Jason Powell of ProWrestling.net, were doing a show, and they were talking about the subject, and they made some comments, and I'll just you know read them to you real quick here. Wade Keller, this is what he had to say. There's going to be a book written someday by some of these EVPs or somebody else closely observing, and we're going to learn about a lot of dysfunction. We're going to learn what a very short honeymoon period there was between certain key people in the company who aren't even talking to each other anymore. I think we're going to find that out. I know that there are people in other wrestling companies saying the Bucks and Cody and Kenny... It's not going to be long at all before they want to have nothing to do with each other. The honeymoon period is going to be short. It seems like it is. It seems like there's some disengagement and people going off into their own that is showing up in certain ways. And then Powell chimed in. And I guess this is why it became news this week, because he added a little something to it. He says, if this isn't happening, then they need to clear up that misconception. I do think it's happening. There's a would-be difference maker who could go there that has that opinion that there is all of this infighting and this person for that reason is very hesitant to go there. So that's why this became news this week because what he's saying is that there is a big wrestling name. He didn't say who it is. And the main reason that they have not yet signed with AEW is because they believe that there is a lot of dysfunction between the EVPs and a lot of politicking or whatever going on behind the scenes and they just don't uh, feel very comfortable about it now you know when he makes the comment that look if this if none of this is true they need to clear up that misconception so what you're asking them to do is basically you know make a comment about let, let's just say that none of this is true you know make a, a a joint comment about an unfounded rumor i mean i don't know that they have to come out and do that but, you know, you look at, at some of the evidence, right? A lot of people point to the fact that Cody stopped being on the Being the Elite show, the Young Bucks Being the Elite show on YouTube a long time ago. He used to be on it a lot. Now I guess he's not on it at all. Cody was asked about that in an interview last year with PW Insider. And he described it as being a scheduling issue. But he also admitted that there have been disagreements between them. This is what he said. He says, I'm never on BTE anymore. BTE has become a spotlight for younger guys and girls, and I totally get that. But I have nothing but respect and love for Matt and Nick and Kenny. And if you ever hear about any infighting or any things of that nature, sure, I'm sure there's arguments and I'm sure there's differences of opinion. 
but we have never gone into a show where we weren't all on the same page, very professional. Those guys all put the professional in professional wrestler. And, uh, you know, we don't spend near as much time together anymore, but we have this show with our faces on it, and I know we want to make it the best. So that's, you know, that's a very telling statement in itself. You know, him basically saying, yeah, sure, there's, there's disagreements and there may be arguments, but look, when, when the camera goes on and we go live on TNT, everything is fine. So you hear comments like that, and yeah, I, I think there probably is smoke to the fire. Not only is Cody never on being the elite, but apparently he finds time to appear on Sammy Guevara's vlog. So is it really a scheduling issue? I, I'm not so sure. If you watch AEW Dynamite, you can just tell they're all doing their own thing. Now, Kenny and the Bucks are aligned together on television now that the Bucks have gone heel. Cody is off doing, he's like off in his own universe. Half the time, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Cody. You look at the year that Cody has had, it's just bizarre. So, clearly Cody is doing his own thing. Has absolutely nothing to do with the Bucks. Has absolutely nothing to do with Omega. In fact, I don't think any of them have even been associated on television with each other since, you know, probably well before the pandemic. Maybe the last time I even remember seeing them in the ring together might have been that first pandemic show, which I think they opened. They were in the ring together in an empty Daly's place, and they wanted to put on this great show of unity, and that might have been it. That might have been the last time. Now, I understand that Cody and Storyline can't challenge for the world title, so, but still, that doesn't mean that you, know, you, you can't associate them on TV. It is very bizarre. Cody seems to be more focused. Well, Cody's focused on a whole bunch of different things. Obviously, he's about to have a kid. He left for a while. He was doing that uh, Go Big show on TBS, which is why Brody Lee got the TNT title last year, because Cody was going to be gone for about a month filming for the show. But, you know, Cody is doing a lot of stuff with the Nightmare Factory. That's kind of his thing, and I'm sure he really wants to push some of those faces from the Nightmare Factory, and I wonder if any of that has something to do with, with what may possibly be going on here where he's got his people that he wants to focus on and push, and maybe that, that differs, maybe, right, from the people that Omega and the Bucks. I mean, I don't know if the Bucks are, are pushing specific people. Obviously, they have their, you know, some of their friends are uh, are working for the company. Brandon Cutler is employed because he's friends with the Young Bucks. Kenny, we've heard about him being a big champion for a lot of the, the Joshi wrestlers, and I'm sure he has his names. Uh, that he pushes for and advocates for behind the scenes. Uh, maybe there's a difference of opinion there. I, I don't know. Again, this is all speculation. But yes, you can point to certain things that make you go, eh, something may be going on here. But this is the issue, right? When you put wrestlers who are active performers in the position of, of authority within the company behind the scenes, and they all have the executive vice president title, I mean, you're just asking for trouble. You're just asking at some point for there to be Something that's just going to blow up in your face. And that could be what we're seeing here. I mean, look, they're, they're kind of off doing their own thing. It's It doesn't sound to me like it's causing problems uh, elsewhere with the product. Certain things feel a little disjointed. Again, it is very strange how Cody is just sort of off in his own universe doing his own thing. But you don't want that to bleed into the product. That is something that Tony Khan has to be very mindful of going forward. And I don't know, you know, you're not going to demote them. You know, you you put them in these positions. And by the way, being in those positions, I'm sure they also get certain benefits that a lot of the other talent do not get because they are in an executive position. So they probably get health benefits. They probably, maybe they have a 401k. They probably have all of that stuff if they're EVPs. So you're not going to, you're not going to yank the title away from them, but it could be uh, it could be trouble down the road. It is going to be something to watch. Now, this story about there being a big name who doesn't want to sign with AEW because they're hearing stories about this. My first thought was Punk. It is strange. Punk uh, at least used to be friendly with some of these guys, and uh, they obviously never made anything work. There was texting going on. I know Punk was offended by that. Don't text me stuff if you want me. Call me or meet with me. 
Punk was the first name that popped up. Obviously, Daniel Bryan's the other name you think of because he's the other big free agent at the moment. Maybe Bryan has heard things and he's a little hesitant, but uh, right now this is all just speculation. But it's this, this is chatter that's becoming louder and louder. At some point, it becomes a distraction for the company where maybe they do have to come out and make some kind of a joint statement. Maybe they have to start appearing on television together to, to shut people up and say, hey, look at us, we're working together. But if you have people in, in an EVP role who are not on speaking terms, who are not even communicating with each other anymore, that's going to become a problem. And that's something that if I'm Tony Khan, if this really is going on, I, I try to get everybody in a room backstage at Dynamite one week, and I try to nip this in the bud before it turns into something that you don't want it to turn into. And if it's having an effect on people who don't want to sign with the company, then you've got a real problem. AEW will beat WWE to the punch this July, taking Dynamite back on the road for the first time since the start of the pandemic. Each event will be held in compliance with state COVID safety guidelines and seating capacities will be limited to whatever the local mandates may be. So even though they are going back on the road, that does not necessarily mean that every building is going to be packed. I mean, every building may not be packed anyway. We still don't know how many tickets they'll be able to sell. Uh, but they are running Florida and Texas for the first three shows. So I doubt there's going to be many restrictions anyway. Wednesday, July 7th at the James L. Knight Center in Miami. July 14th at the HEB Center in Cedar Park, Texas, which is the greater Austin area. And July 21st at the Curtis Culwell Center in Garland, Texas, which is in the greater Dallas area. Per the Observer, they are expected very shortly to announce additional dates for August, September, and October in Rochester, New York, Houston, Milwaukee, Boston, Newark, and Philadelphia. I said this Wednesday night on the stream. If they knew they were heading back on the road so soon, I don't know when the final decision on this was made. I assume it wasn't last minute. But if they had any sense that they were heading back on the road so soon, I don't know why they didn't just do a stadium stampede match with the inner circle and the pinnacle at the pay-per-view in a few weeks to then build to a blood and guts rematch on the road in one of these buildings unless the buildings are just too small to accommodate two rings these are smaller venues that they're going to be running these are buildings that can fit three four five thousand people these are not big arenas that they're going to be running at first but they were just they were so close why not just wait and do blood and guts in front of more people than you were able to fit in daly's place I don't get it. 